So a few months ago, I bought this 1948 Indian Chief with a title that says it's a 1948 Indian Chief. And, and I was pretty confident about my $14,000 purchase until I saw some of the comments on the video that maybe this is not actually a 48. So we had a bunch of comments, some of them saying that the, yeah, the tank was not a 48, so some people even said that the frame was not a 48. So now I'm not really confident as to what I have, but I know someone who does know, and he's gonna authenticate this bike for us, he's gonna tell us what we need to fix, tell us what we got, and then tell us what this thing is worth. Let's go do it. So we took our bike to our buddy Matt at Wheels Through Time, the expert in vintage American motorcycles and the owner of the biggest, coolest motorcycle museum ever. Awesome. There it is, dude. Here it is. The big question is, what? Okay, we were told that we have a title for a 1948, and I'm hearing different things. I know these uh, these are all fiberglass. Fiberglass, okay. Um, Rear one, too? Yeah. Okay. That's all fiberglass. I know this was modified a little bit. I know this is stock. This belongs on here, of course. I've, yeah, right. Um, you need to name it a horse name. Yeah. Um, so we were trying to authenticate and figure out what's what, 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 what what's we actually right, have what's here. What's wrong? Yeah, what's right, what's wrong. Got it. Okay, so one guy even told us that he's like, he's like, that frame's not even a 48. And I'm like, how would you even, how would you possibly know that from the, from the video? But yeah, how would you know that from the video? You got pull down, and pop that down. Yeah, uh, Chris, you help him out with that. That always, it always jumps off the top if you don't do it right. Well, the frame numbers over here sure looks like a 48 frame. Okay. So down over here, you see right down there, it says 348, it's a 48 frame. Okay. So expert was wrong, wasn't he? Yes, um, so it is a 48 frame, all right. 48 frame, yeah, what you're looking at is... Uh, Here, I got my light if you want it. Yeah, there's a number right down there, and it says uh, three, which is threes means chief, 48's the year, and then this is your production number. So that's 348, 318. What's your VIN number? CDH318. Oh, man, it's a matching frame and, and motor... So this is actually, a, unlike the Harleys, but they just said... That's right. This is actually a matching frame Indian. Matching frame and number. So this is a matching numbers motorcycle, which what that means is that this is the same frame that, that came with this motor from when it sh rode off the showroom floor originally. And what that means is the value potential of this motorcycle is significantly higher for the future for the right buyer. Now Matt's gonna tell us whether the rest of the components of this bike are a period correct for a 1948 and what it might cost for us to replace them with OEM or, uh, or remanufactured parts. So that's super strong. That's good. That's, that's what cool. you want right off the bat. So looking at the motor, you know, what carburetor do you have on there? It's a Linkert carburetor. It's an M88, so that's a Harley carburetor. They all work just fine. Is that, that that's normal or is that? Um, it, it gets switched out a lot. It's a Linkert carburetor. The number on there is specific to a Harley WLA, actually. Oh, okay. But it's a three-bolt Harley, or it's a three-bolt Linkert carburetor, which will fit on a lot of applications. In Indian, use something just like it. There are and a all this motorcycle information and all this learning reminded me of something. Luke 1610. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who, and he who is righteousness in a very little thing is also righteous in much. Another thing, you got uh, aluminum oil pump. 48 was the first year for aluminum. Okay. So 48 to 53, the Chiefs used that, that oil pump. So that's the proper oil pump. You got uh, square base cylinders. So the cylinders are the right uh, year, the right era. Uh, the heads are, you know, Chief aluminum heads, right era. The gas tanks. Well, that looks like a 48 emblem. They're round right here. And the round, if I'm not mistaken, is Scout versus Chief. I think it's square right there. Um, so they might be Scout gas tanks, not okay. the end of the world. 
Um, proper chief dash, obviously missing a speedo, wrong, is, wrong switch. This is a different year though. This is for a, a, an older dash? No, I think that's up to 48. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm pretty, I think that that's up to, f might be just 47, but I'm, I'd have to check. And this 1980s Harley Ignition, is that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's obviously okay. wrong, <laughs> but that might be even 60s. Harley. Okay, okay. Looks like you got proper handlebars. All your fork stuff is 46, 7, and 8. So okay. that's the Indian girder fork. They made a couple different lengths of these for different years, and I'm not sure which is which. And you could probably get in a good Indian book and measure center to center here and center to center there. And they were just using that to change the rake a little bit. Okay. But uh, oh, so a longer one down here would set it out a little yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, right. So some years they're like the same length. You can tell that this one is actually a little shorter, and I feel like the later ones were probably shorter on top and longer on bottom. Yeah, right risers. Yeah, it's a really good start, man. Their headlight is kind of the proper type headlight. Kind, kind, kind of. of. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a. Uh, I don't. It's a. Uh, that's a cycle ray guide. Yeah. So that's actually like a. I was wondering if it might be a Harley headlight. Um, it looks kind of Harley-ish. Um, so maybe that's like a remade Harley headlight. Okay, so um, that, that, that's probably not. It, but they look just like that. You know, a bunch of cool extra trim. And, I mean, it's like a, one of those personality bikes, you know. Right. Mm. You know, it's, it's kind of got the flavor of the, the owner all over it. I think your brakes are right. Your front brake backing plate, that looks like 48. This is kind of custom here, but how they extended that way out. And then this is actually a rear brake arm. Oh, so oh that, and that's way, why they had The this. way that that comes out and hangs all over. See, this would just be a, a straight arm and that's why they extended it. So they extended this out because they couldn't find the right brake arm. So they added this bolt. Yes. Just to bring it out here. Just to instead of just like either bending that or, or finding a, the right one. Finding the right one, yeah. And I mean, they're all, it's all hard stuff to find, but that's interesting. I've never seen that done like that before, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. work it worked, fine. kind of. Yeah, you rode this one home too? Uh, six hours. Six hours. How'd it ride? It, uh, it rode, it ran, the engine ran great. Okay. Way better than that WLA. They're balanced. Indian motors are really smooth. Yeah, it was, it was a great ride. Yep. And plus that rear suspension, is kind of, it's kind of cushy. Well, I, I didn't feel any of it because I had this. Right. And that really kind of, uh, sure. it was extremely painful. Yeah. This is a kind of a, it's a stock header. And then this looks kind of like it was. They said it, they said it was twisted. It is twisted. So this so it would right go, here. It would come down here. Yeah, right. And the way that they've mounted it, and I probably just did that to be hot rod and kit with a kick up pipe. But So they welded a bung on there. So this thing would twist, and the pipe usually hugs back here a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So they put the fishtail on. That's extra. What did they put the bung on for? The to drain? The, this, the bung? Yeah. To hold that in a kick up position versus oh, okay. to hold it down. So how, oh, would that, how would that normally have, have been held? Um, I think there's a clamp that goes to right here. So a clamp would clamp around this like a P clamp. Got it. Um, and it would bolt to this lower. And then section. this would bolt onto like right here. That's the clamp. Oh, this is the clamp. That's the clamp. Oh, so, got it. Yeah. yeah. Just hanging up there. That, that clamp's hanging up high to do the, the fish tail versus down low. Um, yeah, you, you got like, it's all silicone, but that's the right tail light and right Does this tail light lens. To you? No. It looks like 67 point something Indy, uh, miles per hour. It's got an Indian on it. Interesting. It came with quite a few 67. belt buckles. 67.92 miles it came per with hour. Belt buckles? Yeah. Really? I'll be darned. Yeah, I don't know. That's cool, man. It's kind of Johnny Cash special, ain't it? His hands about the size now, of Now, that mine. alternator, that, is that a Indian thing? So what's that? You know, that's where it went. That's an alternator. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I think that's, this, was, this, was, this, this was converted. So this is a, it's a twelve volt system. Okay, twelve volt. System. And that's a uh, that's a. Points or electronic? Electronic. Okay. Wow. So yeah. It starts up really easy. And cool. It does start nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, that electronic stuff, I never mess with it much, and it's not because it doesn't work better. Because obviously just, they do it for a reason. It's just. I always got nervous on if something breaks while I'm on the side of the road, I can't fix electronics, yeah. but I can mm -hmm. fix points. Now the shifter, 
Yeah. What side is it supposed to be on? Because I hear they can be on both sides right. and, and the throttle can be on either side they too. They can be on both sides. And what they did here, they obviously did a jockey shift here, but that's all long like that because it went through the tank. So which side's your throttle on, right or left? Right. Throttle's on the right. This, these bikes, you could do them on either side. They, so it, they, you could really order it either way. So that shifter, they actually had shifters that were like, you know, like, oh, it's comfortable. Like right inside your leg. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's interesting that this is back there, but I mean, hell, it's kind of ergonomic, ain't it? Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty, you're going pretty far. Yeah. And then far third reach. gear's way down. It's way down, yeah. Way down, yeah. Um, cool horns. Um, yeah, second neutral. So that's, that might be third gear. Is that third gear? No, I, top. I forget. Yeah. I had, I, had to, I had to learn it and then it took me a little while to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, there's first gears down. So third gear, you're at least pulling it up to you. So when you're going 50, you don't have to lean to the ground. Um, yeah, so alternator's wrong. This shifter, if you wanted to put it back up, all you'd need is linkage okay. to get you to the, well, you'd have to pull the, uh, pull the transmission lid off. Um, which is kind of difficult with these cylinders. And then it, go, it, 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 it goes, it goes through here, right? Yeah, right. So the shifter, you, you, the whole you, way up. You, if it's on that side, your arm would come out over on this side. Your shifter rod would come down this way and you have to put a new arm in your transmission tower to catch your shifter linkage. And it's got to be the opposite, the opposite side of the throttle. That's right. So it'd be over there. So it could have been here, but it also could have been here, depending on what side the throttle was. Right, and you can change all that throttle stuff. So that's just rerouting cables. But, you know, you put the shifter over there, and it comes out on this side. Mm -hmm. And the shift linkage is on this side, even though the shifter's on the other side. Um, but cool, man. That's it, awesome. This, though, this is uh, the stock. That's totally factory. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, sounds just like it used to. <laughs> So I couldn't be happier about this bike. I mean, all the stuff that Matt is telling us about this thing is really, really good. I am a little bummed out that that saddle, that saddle seat is not original for that motorcycle, but that's okay. I can always get, try to find another original one. The big question on my mind is, what is this bike really worth? Was $14,000 a good price for it? The bike in this condition, now we know it's matching numbers. Yeah. Ballpark, what's the value of this thing? Um, well, like it's crazy because right now really nice stock examples restored stock examples okay let me put it this way this bike for the longest time up until a few years ago this bike was worth the same in 2017 as it was in 1995 right they never climbed much but they were always in the the twenty thousand dollar range for a nice restored one mm -hmm. recently you see these like post war chiefs climbing you know pre-war stuff is always high because it's in you know they made less of them they had to endure world wars and right any number of reasons why there's even fewer around than they made the 48s though have been getting really well i can't say that value i wouldn't take this as a barometer but a couple of these like really nice restored examples that the Las Vegas auction just sold for like above fifty thousand dollars. That being said, this thing's far from stock, but you got the best bones. You got the right fork, the right frame, the right motor, the right trans. So, you know, fifteen, fifteen, seventeen grand probably. All right, and then what do you think it would cost for us to get it to where, like, top level, top that's shelf? A, that's a good question, man, and I, it's tough to. To, to speak to some, what somebody else's work costs, you know, but in parts, maybe about five, six thousand bucks in parts um, should get you pretty close to the, in the right direction. Um, and then I don't know about, uh, I don't know about labor, you know, it, it just depends what needs to be done to it. You said the motor runs great, so maybe it's not worth it, it, he, he rebuilt it before uh, before he sold. I I, I I I I talked to him on the phone. Cool. He's cool. like, I love that bike. That's awesome. You know, well, 
so it's a good question. You know, original fenders, original tanks, that stuff's hard to find. There's some really high quality reproduction stuff out there. And that's the thing with Indians, like we were talking about earlier, is the Indian crowd would rather see really nice, straight, cheap metal than, even if it's reproduction, than junky original. Do they make reproduction? They make really like, nice. Like the metal ones? Really these are all not, fiberglass. Yeah, those are fiberglass. They make really nice metal fenders. Oh, really? And gas tanks. Yeah, so uh, there's a company called Jerry Greer Engineering. I've heard about them. Yeah, Jerry, they're in South Dakota. And when, you know, if I'm going to restore it, they've got everything. So if you need little hardware packets, t new tank bolts, new dash bolts, or a new brake cam, like for your front brake there, front, front brake arm, and, you know, all of that stuff is obtainable, really high quality. And they're kind of like the standard okay. for who you use if you're restoring cheap stuff. Oh, uh, we, we, we tracked down a speedometer. Yeah. Uh, nice looking one. The guy said he'd sell it to us for like three twenty five or that's something cheap. like that. Yeah, I thought so yeah, too. That's way cheap. Looks that's real good. nice. I was thinking like, if I had one, it'd be a grand. Yeah. Crap, we gotta buy the thing before this airs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta jump on that. Yeah, but it's hey man, good bones. Like whenever you find one that's matching numbers, that's really cool. Is there anywhere else those numbers are on the frame? Nope. That's, just that's, on that. Okay. Just on that lower rear shock. Uh, <laughs> so. Really cool. Awesome, man. I appreciate uh appreciate the help. Yeah, of course. Well, glad to help, man. And you, you got a good one. And Check out his YouTube channel, Wheels Through Time. He just gave us a tour. The most insane motorcycles and the craziest stories. He's got all that stuff on his YouTube channel. I, I, I really love watching it because I, I love motorcycles. And he's great at telling the story. See you guys later. It looks like uh, I did not get scammed or ripped off on this motorcycle awesome and uh stay stay tuned and see what we do it to do with it next cool oh i need i need, a, I need to get a gun that i keep in there all oh, the time that's what that, yeah, cool dude you need a nice old revolver yeah <laughs> yeah oh six shooter yeah